Kapalava and welcome to this Talanoa on the most pressing issue to our Pacific Islands, the climate crisis. I'm joined here by Sea and Phoebe today and we're going to have a chat about why as Pacifica living in the diaspora we should care about the climate crisis. Where did you grow up and how did your upbringing influence the people that you are today? I was born and raised in Savai'i, Samoa. I moved here six years, eight years ago, I can't remember. Um, I grew up in a very humble family where we sell fish for a living, we sell taro for a living. And I think, um, you know, growing up in that, that upbringing um, really helped me with where I am today. Okay. Yeah. So I was born and raised in Mangere, 275, home of the champions. <laughs> um, and I think that I'm really grateful for the way I was raised and my childhood because our community, um, you'd know like from the media, there's so much negative representation, but I don't think the lived reality is the same when you're actually from Mangere. In Mangere, like everyone had a, had a hustle, everyone had a struggle, and it really taught me to appreciate different cultures and just the value of life mm -hmm. when you don't have much and you're still making so much beauty out of that. I'm very happy that you both joined me here today. I thought we would have like a very honest conversation about accessing the climate conversation while not living necessarily in the motherland. I'd love to first of all hear the story of how did you both get involved into the climate movement? So when I first learned about what was happening in the Pacific Islands um, and I was trying to find ways to help outside of writing poetry is so I would research like climate conferences and I would go to like um, the things that they would hold in the city. Um, it wasn't Indigenous-led or wasn't Pacifica centred and coming from being a young girl who had learned about the climate crisis through the eyes of the islands, that was a lot for me in the beginning. So that was my first entryway into um, the climate conversation here in New Zealand. Mm. Um, well, for me, um, it's <clears throat> my motivation in this space is my family. Um, now that I think I look back about it like they really don't deserve um, where they are right now. So my motivation in this space is my family. And um, I was introduced because the work that I do right now is um, for my family and the family business because it's our main source of income is selling fish for a living. And um, yeah, like no one else had like our whole entire family, there's 12 people in the family and no one else had a, a, any different jobs. Um, it's just mainly selling fish selling fish, selling fish. So yeah, uh, the work that I do is definitely for my family and beautiful Savai, of course. So I guess I kind of heard how you got involved and what exactly was your journey into the space, but I would love to hear your why. My family, the love I have for my family. My parents were both born and raised in Savai um, and they came over to New Zealand in the 70s and 80s and so me and my siblings, we were raised to, of course, be proud Um And when I was younger, I tried to navigate what that meant to be a proud Samoan living in New Zealand, or what it meant to be loyal to your homeland, but also using the privileges you have living here in New Zealand to further that. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, I was trying to figure out, like, how do I find that balance? And how do I do all the things that like our parents want us to do, have a good education while also helping our people, while also trying to make sure it's work that I love doing and I'm passionate about. Like there's a lot to balance. Um, and I didn't find anything that I was really passionate about and really fit that until I found out about climate change. And more importantly, what was happening in our islands, in Savai'i, in Samoa. And so even though I've never lived in Savai'i, when I hear my parents talk about it, I feel so connected because my parents have talked about, you know, when I die, I want to be buried back home. And so even that alone was enough. I feel like my climate work is a labor of love in the meantime. And so that was really a lot of the reasons why I started, even though I didn't live in Salmon here in New Zealand. And I think for me is um, <clears throat> my grandparents um, have sacrificed their lives, um, not just for, you know, not just selling fish so we can get money, it's, um, I'm doing the work that I'm doing right now to save up all the memories that we've had. My grandmother passed away, and I know growing up with this lady, oh my goodness, it's just basically like her life with, you know, 
um, the business. It's just, it was basically all that she knows and all that I known as well growing up. So um, I think it would be so unfair if we lose this business because of climate change. It would be so unfair that I have to explain to my grandma, like, I'm so sorry, I was, didn't do much work to save all your hard work. And um, I think my motivation is, yes, my family, but especially my grandparents. And I want to continue on this business, knowing that all their hard work won't go to waste. Has the climate movement played any role in your feeling of connection to back home in the island? Has it made you necessarily feel like a tie to tie to the motherland? Really? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's helped me connect to our indigenous ways of being um, and the way that we look at the environment because I think that um, a big misconception that a lot of island youth have here in New Zealand is that caring about the environment is a palagi thing. Mm -hmm. But ever since like really going into my climate work and learning about not only my island but different islands and not only our indigenous people but other indigenous people, it's really helped me love the world more. Mm -hmm. And I know that might sound corny but loving, fighting for Samoa and loving Samoa more and learning more about how we connect to nature and everything around us. It's changed the way I look at life and my own life. Mm -hmm. I can acknowledge when things, um, things need changing and when things need nurturing better. And I don't think any of that would have been possible if I hadn't looked at the way I look at the environment and had it shaped by the way that Salmons look at the environment. I'm grateful for it. I'm better for it, I think. I think just adding on to what Philly said, like it really helped me change the way I look at the world. Um, I think when I moved here from Samoa, I was too embarrassed to tell people that I grew up selling fish for a living. But coming into this climate space, it really helped me. Like telling a story about selling fish and running around the streets, it's very rare mm. to hear that. But coming into this space, it's like it helped me open up and like talk more about the stories that people really need to hear these stories and like not. And I think I've never ever heard a story about you know life back in Samoa before. <clears throat> yeah, that's so beautiful. I think what you both like shared is that you serve the climate space, but in a way, it also has shaped a bit of your journey. Mm -hmm. I feel this. I feel the same way as as both of you. Like, it's climate work has made me feel really connected to home mm -hmm. while being away from home. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of us are trying to search for a way to like feel connected to the motherland and it's always like through sports a mm -hmm. lot of the time you know it's like it's how we support Mona Samoa, to Samoa, it's like MMT 6A5 to the world mm -hmm. but it's like what does that love look like? I think that it's encouraged me to look at being Samoan in every area of my life. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we we may fall into a trap of thinking being Samoan is only for this part of my life mm -hmm. but when I work into when I walk into the workplace or I work into the classroom I think there's definitely a pressure here in New Zealand to leave that at the door um, but because of the importance of climate work and the importance of really fighting for our people and seeing how hard our people are fighting it makes you want to be proud in every aspect of your life mm -hmm. that pride has to be turned up a hundred times more when our people are going struggling through things like the climate crisis I think that's the time where we really need to think that we really need to show up for our community in our times of need. And so it's humbled me um, and helped me unlearn like all this Balangi ways of thinking that you just subconsciously learned growing up in New Zealand and really taken me back to, okay, being someone means a lot more than what we're, we're made to feel like when you're here in New Zealand. And that's not a bad thing. It actually enriches your life way more than um, your talk when you're going through like the public school system here or just like um, living not on your homeland. Why do you think that as young people living in the diaspora, we should be thinking about these things and we should be caring about climate change? Um, I think living in the diaspora, there's a lot of like, as you mentioned, it's like a lot of um, misunderstanding about, um, you know, and I think also as well, it's like, the way we learn about things, especially in like the education curriculum as well. There's a lack of um, 
and I think we've all experienced this of like you know learning about our people, learning about our culture. So I I do believe that like it's definitely not their fault that we don't really know and we don't really talk about these things because it it has been influenced by the education curriculum as well, and um, I think. The work that needs to be done here is through the education curriculum because that's where we spend, um, you know, for those of our youth who are under that spot that goes to, you know, education. I love that you said that because mm. for me, um, being born and raised here in New Zealand, some of the times where I felt most connected to Samoa is when I was learning Samoan history. Mm. Like looking at the stories of how our ancestors fought so hard for us through all of these hard times, um, through, you know, the Spanish influenza, the, all these dark times in Samoa's history, um, the thing, the pattern that I always saw was that our people fought so hard mm. for their children, their descendants, for us. And I think the climate crisis was the answer to that question. And so you're, that's so right, that's so yeah. true. Like once our, our youth learn about the true history of our islands and just how powerful it is, it helps them feel more connected and realize they're a part of something way bigger mm. Mm. than even just this lifetime, yeah. which is so beautiful. It is. Yeah. And with like at home as well, yes, we learn about our people at home, but sometimes our parents just assume that, oh, you're someone you should know. Mm. Like they just have this mentality, you're someone you should know these things, mm. which is like, how am I supposed to know? Yeah. yeah. You don't know until you know. Yeah. Mm. But I think we like, us in the movement have to like constantly remind other Pacifica people in the diaspora that you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Like how, how are you supposed to know things that have never been told to you before? And I think one of the most important things for young people trying to get into this work to do is to forgive themselves for the things that they haven't done. Because mm. you can't mm. do what you don't know you should be doing. Yeah. Um, and I think that hopefully when our young people can forgive themselves for what they haven't done, then they can come into this space. And I guess to wrap everything up, what advice would you give to young people who are thinking about joining the climate movement, but maybe feel like they don't know enough, or this is not something that they should be caring about? Why should they care and why should they join? The first piece of advice that I can give is um, first and foremost, block out everything else you know about the climate crisis. Mm -hmm. And I say that because um, you need to feel at home within yourself to feel at home within the space, if that makes sense. I'm here for the people that I love. Mm -hmm. I'm here for the reason that I started doing this in the first place. And as long as you keep that really to your fatal, if you really believe that and um, let it guide you, especially in the moments where you're too scared to talk or where you're thinking, if I don't say this, no one else is going to say it, or you're too scared to do something, if you think about that passion and the reason why, it will give you almost like the courage of your ancestors. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like that, eh? Like you're so scared to do stuff and then you remember why you're doing it. Yeah. And then it becomes like, it becomes so much easier mm. because it's not really about you as an individual, it's about us as a community. And it helps you get over yourself. There's yeah. so many people, so many beautiful people in the community um, of all ages who are ready, who are ready for our youth to step in, mm -hmm. um, step in and step into their greatness. I love that. I love that idea of like, get over yourself, don't worry. Like we're not asking you to save yeah. the world. I think because sometimes it feels like that, right? Like sometimes it feels like we're asking our young people like, join the movement, save the world. Like you mm -hmm. are, but sometimes saving the world looks like giving a climate activist from South a ride to the climate strike <laughs> in town. Like sometimes saving the world looks like buying the like two pieces of paper from the stationery shop to write the mm -hmm. signs on, you know, like in actuality, like saving the world looks like Google documents and mm -hmm. posters and mm -hmm. art and writing. And it's not necessarily like this big scary thing that sometimes like the world can make it out to be. Mm -hmm. And what would you say, Sarah? What would be your advice to someone wanting to join the climate space. This beautiful lady advised me before uh, when we sat down. Um, so I was sharing with her, I was like, oh, I've lost passion. I don't want to do this anymore. Like I've, I've tried, but like my family are really struggling. I think I should really come up with something else. Um, and she told me like, because I was, I was telling her that I'm too ma, 
I'm too uncomfortable to walk into the space. And then she told me, she was like, if you ever find yourself ever again in like in those spaces where you feel uncomfortable, you're in the right space. Um, like even like when you invite me to like Talanoas with Pacific kind of warriors, I was like, oh, I don't deserve to be there. Like, I don't want to go. It's like very uncomfortable because I don't know anyone. And it, and it got me thinking about what this lady says. Well, I'm in the right space. Like, and then I just end up like, how did I make, just go. Just go like, if, when you invite me to that, that retreat, I was, I was honestly so, I was so close to telling my parents, can we turn back please? Because I honestly don't want, I don't know anyone. All I know is Brianna Fruin, that's it. And then when I got there and listening to everyone's stories, listening to people of like, wow, I'm so glad that I didn't tell my parents to turn the car back because like it helped me find ways to tell my story mm. and help me tell ways to help Savai as well. Yeah. Um, I've traveled to Argentina because I came to you because I didn't tell my parents to turn the car back. Yeah. I was managed to um, go to places because from that single, from that making that decision to stay um, with Pacific Climate Warriors even. And um, yeah, just start where you are, as we mentioned before. You don't have to come up with a big project. That's beautiful. Start where you are. I think it's um, such a beautiful way to like end our conversation and if any young people are watching today just start where you are we need you we need more people so yeah email these two <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> actually <laughs>